Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. This is my 1989 Ford uh, Festiva. Well, it's actually a Shogun. It started out as a Ford Festiva. You know, the funny thing is, this is a car we did probably almost 10 years ago when I started this website. It was about a three and a half minute video. And I always park it back there. And whenever we shoot a car in that room, people go, hey, what's that gray thing in the back? Hey, how about doing something on that? So that's what we're doing now. We'll do a bit more updated version. I've had this car, what, 26 years now? Almost 27 years. And what it is is it started life as a Ford Festiva, and it has, has a Taurus show engine in the back seat. This car was the brainchild of two brilliant guys, uh, Chuck Beck and Rick Titus. Chuck Beck is uh, just one of those crazy engineers. He built a motorcycle with a Lamborghini Espada engine in it, and it actually runs. He was on the uh, Ford GT40 racing team in the pits at Le Mans. Uh, Rick Titus, of course, he's the son of Jerry Titus, famous race car driver, and he's a famous race car driver himself. He does a show called Driver's Talk on radio. You can Google that on the internet and see what it is. I've been on the show. It's a fabulous show. Anyway, they built seven of these. And I have to remember, back in 1989, there weren't a lot of fast cars. Corvette was about the fastest thing out there, certainly with the most horsepower, 350. Uh, the Viper had yet to come along. So what they decided to do was go power to weight ratio. They took the Taurus Show, which was a breakthrough car at the time. It had this fabulous three liter Yamaha V6 engine. It's just a great, great motor. Uh, and it's about 220 horse. And they took it out of the front wheel drive show, kind of turned it around and put it in the rear of this car. It, I make it sound simple. There's a lot more engineering in it than that. But that's basically what it does. Retaining the five-speed gearbox and everything. The engine is completely stock, but it's dropped about a thousand pounds in weight. Literally a thousand pounds of weight. This thing weighs what, 2,200 pounds, something like that, 220 horse. And since I live in a hilly area, we put nitrous on it to give it a little boost to 300 occasionally. And this thing is so much fun. If you've ever seen or an alt R5 turbo. It's like that, but on steroids, but way, way faster. Just a really fun, fun car to have. And the interesting thing is, I pulled my file out on this car the other day, and this car was a huge deal when it came out. Here is the brochure. Here's, let me show you that. Here's the original brochure. This is what sold me on the car. Actually, it's under 2,200 pounds. It weighs 2,190 pounds. Uh, weight distribution, 57% rear, 43% front, uh, 0 to 60 in 5 seconds, which was pretty quick back in the day. Here's all the specs right here. In fact, here was Chuck doing a burnout with the car. He knew that would sell me the car. Chuck is very sneaky. I got this in the mail first. Well, needless to say, it piqued my interest because... The Ford Festiva was a front-wheel drive car. Wait a minute, why are the tires in the back? Well, you get the idea. Then, you can see a much, a man who looks like my son, but that's actually me 26 years ago on the cover of, what is this, Turbo and High Performance Magazine. There's our little uh, installation right there with the nitrous. Jay's ultimate pint-sized rocket. It says, Jay has added 90 horse nitrous progressive injection could set up to the car. Well, is, yeah, there's about 90 horsepower, so it takes it about 300. Uh, there's a whole article there. I'm not sure if this magazine even exists anymore, but if you took the Evelyn Wood speed reading course, you can get through this right about now. But there were tons of articles on this car. Look, it even made the cover of Road and Track magazine. What year? That's uh, February 1991. And they thought this car would really take off, you know, but they only sold seven of them. Maybe because it didn't look like a fast car, which is why I liked it. It, it was such a sleeper. But God, it was in Auto Week. It was in, uh, here's another special edition Shogun, another, I mean, there are tons of articles in here. Uh, what is this one? Uh, there was a Shogun, a show registry. But, you know, they even put out their own shop manual. Chuck was, and Rick were really uh, pretty good about doing follow-up. 
And since there are only seven cars, you know, you can pretty much have the club meetings in a closet. But all kinds of brochures. Um, it was in the 10 best cars issue of Car and Driver magazine. I mean, this was really a, a fantastic car when it came out. Uh, I think this car was about, it said there will only be 250 of these cars built. And they started at $42,000, which was a lot of money back in uh, 1989, 1990. I think I paid 35 for mine, if I'm not mistaken. Which one is this? More Auto Week. Even made Exotic Car Quarterly. Look at that. It's on the cover with the Lotus 4200R. Whatever happened to that thing? I have no idea. Let's put all this back in here before I drop it all down. And it's a car that's achieved kind of a cult status. You know, people who know, really know. And, you know, young kids stop me all the time. They go, hey, do you have a Taurus show? My dad told me about those. And, you know, so the legend builds up of these things. But it's got the Boyd wheels on it. I mean, it's exactly as I bought it back in the day. And as I mentioned, this engine is just bulletproof. You know, it really is. It just revs. In fact, the engine was supposed to rev much higher. Uh, 7,000 is now the red line. Fuel cuts off at 7,300. But this engine actually revved to about eight grand, maybe a little bit more. But at the time, Ford, uh, you know, the, um, the ancillary items, you know, the alternator, the water pump, they didn't think they could take that kind of RPM. So they limited it to 7,000 RPM. But there's a lot more horsepower to be gotten from these motors. And it's one of the great, I think it's certainly the greatest motor, certainly the 1980s, which was not a great time for innovative engines. But this is certainly one of them. And as you can see, oh, there's a nitrous bottle. Gives an extra 90 horsepower or so when you need it. And you can see it's a pretty neat installation. And that's where it sat for the last 27 years. All I've done is change the oil, and uh, yeah, I swapped out a battery, a couple of batteries probably. But other than that, God, it's just a great, great motor, you know? Uh, because all you've done is increase the power to weight ratio. Instead of moving around 3,500 to 3,600 pounds, it's moving around 2,200 pounds. So that's like adding, you know, 100 horsepower or something. And it's certainly a lot of fun to drive. It's got air conditioning, five-speed box, Park it anywhere, steers very light. You know, it's the fun part is when I, uh, when I drive this thing, you pull up to a light. This has happened to me twice. Hey, your tires are in the back, uh, jerk. You know, guys in golfs and all kinds of uh, GTIs, things like that. You know, because they think it's a front-wheel drive car. And I go, oh, it is, oh, no, it's my kid's car. I don't know anything about it, you know. And then I nail it and you blow their doors off. It's wonderfully mature, but uh, terrible fun, too. So that's basically it. Yeah, that's how she works. Pretty straightforward. In the interior, you see this just fits right in here. You put that back in there. And lock these down. And that holds it in place and takes care of all the heat and the noise. Got some super traps on there, so it makes it sound pretty good. But the guys did a great job building this car. You know, this is one of those love project. I'm sure they didn't make any money on them because they only sold seven of them, which sort of surprised me. I thought they'd sell a lot more. Uh, interest in this car seems to have gone up a lot in the last uh, few years because it's just, well, it's, it's one of seven. It's unique and it's proven. I haven't heard of anybody. I ran into a couple of other owners and they've all loved them. Some have bought them secondhand or thirdhand and nobody seems to have any problems with them, you know. Chuck and Rick did a wonderful, wonderful job. I mean, even you'd think these panels they made would somehow deteriorate or crack or fade. No, they used high quality material and, and she runs great. But it's just a wonderful, wonderful car. As I said before, when this came out, it was $42,000 in 1990, which would be, eh, I'd probably be 60,000 now, maybe 65,000. You say, would you rather have a Porsche 911 or this? Most people probably go for the Porsche 911. <laughs> I chose this, just because it was faster than the Porsche 911. 
and it was just a lot of fun. It was, you know, this would be the kind of car I think Ken Block would have a great time just doing donuts in in the middle of Main Street. I mean, I, I just enjoy this thing so, so much. It's, it's really terrific. Uh, got some custom seats the boys had made. Momo steering wheel. I uh, see custom dash pack video. Uh, was 160 mile an hour speedometer video tack. Then you had, of course, water temperature, fuel gauge, oil, and uh, and uh, oil temperature as well. Uh, look, you even got a CD player. Look, and you see, born in the USA, Springsteen. What else have I got here? Okay, that one. Okay, didn't that was in the tape deck a little too long? What is that? Oh, that's too old. Okay, yeah, you don't really see cassettes anymore. Which is this one? Uh, Oh, I never even heard of that one. Who's this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know those, but those, uh, yeah. Okay, just forget about those. But as I said, there's plenty of leg room. It's really a comfortable car. Visibility is excellent. Seats are comfortable. Oh, this is really cool. Let me show you on this side. And this is for your nitrous bottle right here. This turns it on. Okay. Now, that, this is the heater. There's a a coil that goes around the bottle that heats the bottle. Turn on your nit nitrous, and every time you want to go, just press that. It shoots a little shot in there, and you go. This is a dimmer switch for your dash lights. So it uh, gives you that extra. Anytime you need an extra 90 horsepower, you hit that. It gets a little pricey, but hey, what price horsepower, really? Now look, I even have the original starting instructions from 1989 for the stupid four-cylinder engine that was in here. Let me show you what's under the front hood where the engine used to be. The gas tank is in there. Now, we got a fuel cell. As you see, it's not exactly a show car under here. It's a working, everyday car. I drove it in the rain, used it to commute, do whatever I had to do. Um, radiator here. Uh, then you got your gas tank is up front. This is where the engine used to be. It's a fuel cell in there now. But everything else remains the same master cylinder and all that, windshield washer bottle. I mean, everything the car was intended to do at the time. I mean, it's really just a neat little package. In fact, let's take it up next door, next door rather. I'll put it up on the rack. I'll show you what it looks like underneath. Once again, we've got the vehicle up on our uh, Stelcone lift here. Uh, we're going to do this more and more because people like to see what's underneath the vehicle, especially something that's got uh, something that's homemade or you know, done by an outside builder or something. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty neat installation. Uh, this subframe here, they made special for the car. Uh, Four-wheel disc brakes. But you know, for a car that's 30 years, every, every fitting under here is 27 years old. I haven't done a thing to this car. You know, it's all remained pretty, uh, pretty bulletproof. Nothing leaks. Chuck and Rick did a beautiful, beautiful job. I mean, they really are engineers and builders. That's what's great about it. it this has been a, as reliable as any, you know, factory car. And in fact, I would say even more so. Um, yeah, see, pretty straightforward. This is your Taurus engine. We really haven't changed anything. All they did was really drop the power plant in and turn it around and do a little bit of clever engineering. Original gearbox, clutch, everything. And it's simple enough to work on. You can just take this engine right out of here. Uh, I don't anticipate having to do that for at least another 20 years or so, at least. By that time, I'll probably be dead, so it'll be the other guy's problem. But anyway, and our Super Trap mufflers, these are just kind of motorcycle mufflers that are on there, which are kind of cool. See all the heat insulation around there? None of that has buckled or anything from excessive heat. It always runs right at ooh, 195, something like that. It's just been a real terrific car. And being so light, brake pads last a long, long time, because every time you stomp on the brakes, you're not stopping two tons of worth of material. You're stopping just about a ton. So with four-wheel disc brakes, it's not a problem. In fact, I'm still on the original pads on this thing. No, no, maybe I changed them once. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I did change them once. But as you can see, Nothing to hit or, I wonder what this goes. Huh, okay, okay, look at this. Now I have no idea. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go crazy trying to figure, all right, see what you've done. For, for 27 years, this has been no problem. Because I put this on the list to show you guys, and I'm gonna go crazy trying to trace this and see 
where it goes. You know what it is? I'm just going to stuff it back up there. I'm not going to worry about it. Come on, let's, let's take it for a ride. Show you what it can do. Actually, if it's such a short wheelbase car, it handles pretty good. I got to be a little careful. These tires I've had in here for quite a while. I got to get some new rubber, but uh, we'll put our foot in a little bit and you'll see how it goes. You got to remember when this thing came out uh, in 1989, 1990, there wasn't much out there. The most powerful car you could buy was probably, at least in America, the Corvette, 350 horsepower. There's no Viper yet. Uh, emissions are still strangling everything. Um, I remember when the Dodge Viper came out in 92, it had 400 horsepower, and they said, you'll never see this kind of horsepower again from a major manufacturer. And of course, that all turned out not to be true. But the fun thing about this was, it was just such a sleeper. You know, it just didn't look like anything. I'm surprised they only built seven of these. It's hard to believe there weren't more than seven people crazy about this car. Because when uh, Chuck Beck first showed me this thing, I, I just, he came to my house with car number one, the yellow one. I just saw it again, it's on YouTube. It's been up for sale a few times. And I went for a drive and I said, oh, I gotta have one of these. Sure, you could have bought a Corvette or maybe even some kind of Porsche for that kind of money, but this was really the more money than Brains Club. I, I just love this thing. It's got air conditioning, plenty of leg room, and nobody knows what it is. And this engine is bulletproof. You know, I've had this thing now, God, 25 years, and I've never done anything other than change the battery uh, every maybe eight years, and maybe, uh, well, of course, change the oil every year. But that, that's all I've done to it, and it runs great. Oh, and you gotta change the nitrous bottle every, every now and then. A lot of people compare this to the Renault Turbo R5, but this will blow the doors off of Renault. Oh my God, yeah. With the nitrous, you're looking at well over 300 horsepower in about a 2,200 pound package. I mean, you gotta be a little careful with this short wheelbase. It can spin on you pretty quickly, but that's all right. I've gotta respect it. a lot of fun. <laughs> it's one of the few cars you actually make a U-turn without having to do a three-pointer. I mean, the wheelbase is so short, and it just keeps pulling and pulling. And once you hit the nitrous, nitrous bottle, it really takes off. Come on, I'll show you. We'll get up on the freeway, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's all power to weight ratio. Realize this thing weighs like a thousand pounds less than the big Taurus it came out of. Chuck Beck and Rick Titus are real car guys. I mean, they really knew what they were doing when they put this thing together. It's such an unusual car. You know, if it looked like some kind of super swoopy sports car, it would defeat the whole purpose. The great thing about this motor is I got the red line set for about 7,000, but it would actually go quite a bit more than that. It's just that when the engine was developed, well, what happens is fuel shuts off at 7,300. Red line is closer to eight grand, but the uh, auxiliary, you know, the uh, alternator and the water and all the other stuff, uh, Ford didn't feel those, those things could handle eight grand, so they redlined it at 7,000 RPM. But there's plenty more. I mean, this engine will just rev forever. Oh my God. It makes the best noise. These tires are at least 15 years old. And uh, you don't want to be doing silly stuff with the uh, old tires. You know, you want to make sure you got fresh rubber on your car. 
especially going to be doing any cornering at all because old tires are just like banana peels, boy. You know, I think you remember our friend Paul Walker when they had that terrible accident. That Porsche they were involved with had 10-year-old tires. And at that point, they're hard as a rock. And it's your responsibility as the owner to check your tires, check it for cracks, you know, especially if you've got passengers in your car and you're, and you're doing uh, stuff on a racetrack or something. Always check it. You know, I check my tire pressure every time I take a car out. I know that seems excessive, but a couple of times I've been caught out. You know, I'll find one tire. Whoa, look at that. It's down to, you know, 16 pounds, 18 pounds. And the tire might look fine. So you always want to do that. Check your tire pressure. In fact, maybe I'll try and burn off some of the rubber on this uh, a little bit later. I'm sure what kind of burnout this thing does. Might as well get rid of these old tires before I... Uh, put the new ones on. So that's the big question is, will it do a burnout? A little tiny car like this, doesn't seem like it should be able to do one, but well, let's see what happens. I think the Hellcat's getting a little worried. See you guys next week. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>